Hi, I'm Hub Arkish for ChicagoSunTimes.com with our review of the Bears' 21-13 victory over the Minnesota Vikings. Only the second time in seven weeks we can talk about a win, and it could not have come at a better time as pressure was mounting everywhere on the front office, the coaching staff, the players, and they played about the way you would expect them to, and they should, against a mediocre opponent. Nothing negative about this win. They had to have it. They showed up after not showing up for three weeks in a row against Miami, New England, and Green Bay, and played really well where you would think they would, and yet still struggled in some other areas. Let's talk about the real positives first, though. They had more than twice as many yards on offense as the Minnesota Vikings. When you take away that 148-yard run on the fake punt the Vikings had on their second possession, the Bears with well over 425 yards of offense. More importantly, they had a 17-minute time of possession advantage. That almost never happens. That means they dominated the football game, no question about it. As I said, they did it where you thought they would. The Vikings, their pass defense has been good. Their cornerbacks questionable. Brandon Marshall and Alshon Jeffrey with 18 catches between them absolutely dominated those corners and they brought the chunk play back. They had five plays of 30 yards or longer, including a 30-yard run from Matt Forte, a 32-yard catch and run on a screen pass. So the big play was back in their arsenal. The defensive line did what it had to do. Jared Allen, you knew he'd have a sack against his former teammates and he played well all day long, as did young linebacker John Bostic. The Bears better in the secondary, but now let's be honest about a few things here. The Minnesota Vikings aren't very good. The Bears offensive line played really well because the strength of this Viking team is that defensive rush and that pass rush, and the Bears didn't let them bother Jay Cutler all day long. For the most time, Cutler had the time to do whatever he chose to, which included completing 31 of 43 passes for 330 yards. So hats off to the reworked offensive line with Brian De Puente stepping in at left guard for the injured Matt Slauson. Michael Ola replacing the injured Jordan Mills. They had a good game. Matt Forte, as I said, excellent game there on the defensive side of the ball. In addition to Jared Allen, the interior of the defensive line played the run relatively well. The Vikings ripped off a couple chunks on their first possession, and after that, the Bears' defense took control. Now, what do we worry a little bit about? You had Jay Cutler, unfortunately, throwing that dangerous interception halfway through the third quarter that was the prototypical Cutler pick. The score was only 14 to 10 at the time. He got pressured, rare time in the ballgame he was pressured, rocked on his back foot, threw a dangerous interception. But the defense stepped up on sudden change defense. The return to the 27-yard line from Harrison Smith. Bears only let him get to the 20. And then Blair Walsh misses a field goal, so no damage done. And from that point to his credit, Cutler took over, takes the Bears on a 72-yard march, gets the touchdown, makes it 21-13. And even though the Vikings tried a couple times after that, the game was pretty much over. So hats off to these Bears players for getting off the schneid. Now the question is, can they continue to beat mediocre competition with Tampa Bay coming to town? And then what happens in 10 days when they go to Detroit on Thanksgiving? We'll have it all for you right here, as well as all the best sports in town, ChicagoSuntimes.com, 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. Thank you.